Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Tadpole Time. So now we are just entering the month of June. Summer is just starting. It's getting really hot outside. Y'all are probably going outside to play. If you have a pool, you might be swimming in the pool or running around in the sprinklers to try and cool off. And the perfect snack to have after a fun day out in the sun is watermelon. I really, really like watermelon. It's the perfect juicy treat to kind of refresh after a long, hot day. Some of y'all may not have even had watermelon yet. If that's a new food, I recommend that you try it. It's a really great, popular treat to have during the summer, and that's what today's Tadpole Time is all about. So let's get started with our first poem. It's called Summer Melon, and it's all about watermelon, and it goes full of water, full of sweet, Juicy, messy, treat to eat. Dessert of summer, picnic jewel, ruby red, and oh so cool. So I really like this poem because it perfectly describes exactly what watermelon is like to eat in the summer. Very juicy, very refreshing, but also a little messy and sticky. Our next poem is our watermelon ABCs. So I think it's always good for us to do our ABCs and know all the letters of our alphabet. So it goes A, B, C, D, E, watermelon is good for me, F, G, H, I, J, I can eat it every day. K, L, M, N, O, plant a seed and watch it grow. P, Q, R, S, T, ripe and very juicy. U, V, W, X, Y, you will like it if you give it a try. Z, 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 watermelon is good for me. So I really like this poem because it's about watermelon and it also has our ABCs in it so we can work on our ABCs. All right, boys and girls, it's time to move on to our song. Now this song is one of my favorite songs and it's called Down by the Bay. So it's got a lot of words to it, but it's all kind of the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing the first part of the song and y'all kind of repeat line by line and y'all kind of repeat the words back to me. And then we do that a couple times, but each time at the end, it's a little bit different. And so I have the pictures down at the end that have what's going to be at the end. So y'all just sing the first part along line by line and then we'll do it all together. All right, so it goes down by the bay where the watermelons grow. Back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, Good job, everybody. So then we'll sing that all together, but then at the end, we'll add in the very last bit and you'll see the pictures there that kind of describe what's going on. It's kind of silly. I hope y'all enjoy it. So let's get started. We'll go down by the bay where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, did you ever see a bee sipping iced tea down by the bay? Down by the bay where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, did you ever see a duck driving a truck down by the bay? Down by the bay where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, did you ever see a fox putting on socks down by the bay? Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, did you ever see a frog dancing on a log down by the bay? Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, did you ever see a goat cruising on a boat down by the bay? All right, last one, y'all ready? Down by the bay, where the 
where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go, for if I do, my mother will say, did you ever see a mouse building a house down by the bay? Good job, boys and girls. I hope y'all liked that song. And now let's move on. We have a very special game that we've prepared and I'd like to share it with you. Okay, boys and girls, we've made a fun watermelon bowling game right here. We have taken some two liter bottles and painted them to make them look like watermelons. See, so this is something you can do at home. If you just got an extra, some extra bottles laying around and you can make your own watermelon bowling game. But before we start playing, let's count how many watermelon bowling pins we have. So can you count the pins? Good job, let's count them together. We have one, two, three, gotta reach for this one, four, five, and six. So we have six watermelon bowling pins and I have one watermelon bowling ball. So it's just a regular ball, but it's green. So it looks like a watermelon when it's whole and it hasn't been cut yet. So let's do a little bit of watermelon bowling and see if we can knock down any pins. All right, so we've knocked down one pin. Now, how many pins do we have left? Can y'all count the pins we have left? Good job, let's count them. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have five watermelon bowling pins left. So let's try and bowl again and see if we can knock down any more pins. All right, so we've knocked down these pins. So can y'all count how many pins we've knocked down? So we've knocked down one, two, three watermelon bowling pins. So how many pins do we have left? Can y'all count those? And we have one, two watermelon bowling pins left. So let's see, and we'll go bowling one more time, see if we can knock down the rest of our pins. So we knocked down one watermelon bowling pin. How many do we have left? We have one watermelon bowling pin left. Nice game, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed it. Remember, this is a real simple game that you can make and play at home. If y'all do decide to make a watermelon bowling game, make sure you uh, take some video, take some pictures and tag them and share them with us because we really want to see what kind of fun y'all are getting to up at home. And now we'll move on to our story. So our story for today is a really special story um, because it is written in English and in Spanish. So I have Mallory here with us and she's going to help read the Spanish parts for us in the story. And the name of this book is called Icy Watermelon or Sandia Frida. So go ahead and get started. Oops. I have a surprise for you, Mama calls out. It's big and round and it's green on the outside. Maria sees that her mother has a knife and a cutting board sitting out on the table. Is it something to eat, she asks. Yes, Mama answers. It has black seeds and is very juicy. To me, it tastes best when it's ice cold. Les tengo una sorpresa, dice Mama. Es grande, redonda y verde por fuera. Maria ve que su mamá tiene un chuchillo chuchillo y una tabla de cortar sobre la mesa. ¿Se come? Pregunta ella. Sí, tiene semillas negras y es muy jugosa. A mí me encanta fría. I know what it is, Maria says. Me too, adds Hugo. Mom, is it a watermelon? Little Sarah asks. Yes, Mama answers. Very good, Sarita. Now, go tell your grandparents that we have a surprise for them. Ya sé lo que es, dice María. Yo también, dice Hugo. Mami, ¿es una sandía? Pregunta Sarita. Sí, contesta mamá. Muy bien, Sarita. Anda, dile a tus abuelos que vamos con una sorpresa. Sí. 
Clarita runs out onto the porch. Mama has a surprise coming, she announces. Guess what it is? Is it an apple pie? Papa guesses. No. Is it chocolate ice cream? Grandfather asks. He loves anything chocolate. No, abuelo. It's something big and round. Big and round, says grandmother with a smile. Is it your grandpa's tummy? Sarita <laughs> giggles. Sarita sale a la galería. Mamá viene con una sorpresa. Adivinen qué es. ¿Es un pastel de manzana? Pregunta papá. No. ¿Es helado de chocolate? Pregunta abuelo. A él le encanta el chocolate. No, abuelo. Es algo grande y redondo. Grande y redondo. ¿Es la panza de tu abuelo? Pregunta abuela con gran sonrisa. Sarita se ríe. No, abuela. The surprise is something to eat. Look, here it comes now, says Sarita. Watermelon for everybody, the children shout. They help to pass out the juicy slices of melon. No, abuela. La sorpresa se come. Mira, aquí viene ya, dice Sarita. Sandira para todos, anuncian los niños y ayudan a repartir las rebanadas de la rica fruta. Every Sunday, abuelo and abuela come and spend the afternoon in the little one with the little ones in the country. Before sunset, everybody goes outside to sit on the porch and enjoy the fresh air. The grown-ups have their rocking chairs and the children play around them. Mmm, everyone savors the watermelon. Save the seeds for the garden, mother suggests. We'll see if we can grow some big, sweet watermelons like this one. Todos los domingos vienen los abuelos a pasar la tarde en el campo con los nietos. Antes de que baje el sol, todos salen a sentarse en la galería para tomar aire fresco. Todos los adultos tienen sus mesadoras y los niños juegan alrededor de ellos. Mm. Todos saboreen la sandía. Guarden las semillas para sembrarlas en el jardín, dice mamá. A ver si no salen unas sandías grandes y dulces como esta. My papá raised a watermelons, grandfather remembers. Mi papá sembraba sandías, recuerda abuelo. The whole family would pitch in to harvest the watermelons, and then we'd load them up into one great big truck. Papa would take them to sell to the grocery stores, and once in a while, we would park next to the highway and sell them. We drove around all the barrios, too. I always like to go along, Grandfather tells them. Entre toda la familia, pizcábamos las sandías y las cargábamos, cargábamos, cargábamos en un camión grande. Papá las llevaba a vender a las tiendas y de vez en cuando nos estacionábamos al lado de la car cartera para venderlas. También dábamos vuelta por los barrios. A mí me gustaba acompañarlo siempre, les cuenta abuelo. In fact, that's how I met your grandmother, grandfather smiles at the children, and then he winks. Is it true, Abuela? Maria asks. The grand folks take each other's hands and grandmother asks, answers that it is true. Así fue como conocí a tu abuela. Abuelo le sonríe a los niños y le esquina un ojo. ¿Es cierto, abuela? Pregunta Maria. Los abuelos se toman de la mano y abuela le contesta que es verdad. Yes, sweetie, I met him one day when he came selling watermelons in our barrio. My mother sent me to buy a watermelon from them, and our dog Chula followed me and my father out the door. Chula was little, but she was very feisty. She jumped up in the truck and went after your grandfather. <laughs> sí, mi hija. Lo conocí un día, un día que andaban bien vendiendo sandías en mi barrio. Mi mamá me mandó a comprarles un sandía y me, mi perita chula nos 
siguió a mi papá y a mí. Esa chula era muy brava y se subió al camión y se fue encima de tu abuelito. He dropped the watermelon we were buying, so we had to pay for two. Your grandfather's face was so red, it turned redder than the watermelon line all over the street. Se le cayó la sandía y tuvimos que pagarle por dos. Se puso rojo mi viejo, más rojo que la sandía que cuero partida en la calle. That's funny, abuelo, Hugo says, almost falling over with laughter. That's okay, children. Thanks to that crazy little dog, your grandmother and I fell in love. Mother offers more watermelon to everybody, and they all enjoy the talk and laughter. Qué chistoso, abuelo, comenta Hugo, ahoncándose de risa. No le hace hijos. Por culpa de, la, de esa perita, chif, chiflada nos enamoramos tu abuelo y yo. Mamá les ofrece más sandía y siguen disfrutando de la plática de la risa. Okay, everybody, I have a riddle for you, too, says Grandfather. What's big, red, and red like a watermelon and fills me with joy? A heart, guesses Maria. Yes, a heart full of love, Grandfather agrees. Very good, Maria. A heart is not as big as a watermelon, Hugo protests. No. But my abuelo's heart is, declares Sarita, and she moves closer so that abuelo can gather her up into his arms. <laughs> Escuchen, yo también les tengo un adivinanza, dice abuelo. Es grande y rojo como la sandía y me llena de algaría. ¿Qué es? ¿El corazón? Adivina María. Sí, el corazón lleno de amor, afirma abuelo. Muy bien, María. El corazón no es tan grande como un sandía, protesta Hugo. No, pero el corazón de mi abuelo sí lo es, declara Sarita, y se acera para que el abuelo la tome en sus brazos. You see, Hugo, they already say that I have a tummy like a watermelon and a heart like one too. I better go home before they start saying Jose Maria is just one big sandía. You're funny, abuelo. <laughs> Ya ves, Hugo, dicen que tengo panza y corazón de sandía. Ya me voy antes de que me digan, José María es pura sandía. Ay, qué abuelo, abuelo tan chistoso. The grown-ups begin to clean up the porch, and Hugo reminds them that they should save the seeds. The children chime in that it, it would be a good idea to plant the seeds right now. Mama and Papa nod in agreement. Before they all go out to plant them in the garden, everyone gets hugs and goodbye kisses from abuelo and abuela. The sun too has begun to leave for the day, but the family continues to enjoy the blessing of life. Los adultos empiezan a limpiar la garajía cuando Hugo les recuerda que deben guardar las semillas. Los niños piensan que es una buena idea sembrarlas ahorita mismo. Mamá y papá están de acuerdo, pero antes de que salgan a plantarlas en el jardín, los abuelos se despiden con abrazos y besitos para todos. El sol también se va despidiendo mientras que la familia sigue disfrutando de las bendiciones de la vida. The end. El fin. So our craft for today is a really fun one. We are making what's called a pinwheel that looks like a watermelon. So a pinwheel kind of moves around. You can turn it in the wind. So we decorated it like watermelon. So to do this craft, what you'll need is a pink paper and green paper in the shape of a square. And you're actually going to glue those two sides together. So I did mine with a glue stick, but you can use regular Elmer's glue or any sort of thing that you have together that will make it stick together. You'll also need some scissors, a straw, a hole punch, a little brad, and then a dark green marker and a black marker. So we'll go ahead and start with our square of the pink on one side and green on the other. And what you want to do is to fold it 
diagonally across so that you make a triangle like that. And then you will cut down the triangle at the tip of the triangle about two thirds of the way down. So not all the way down, a little bit more than half way down. So that's about good. And then you'll unfold your square. Fold your square. And then you'll fold it again, going the opposite direction, but still diagonal. And you'll have another triangle like that. And then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna cut starting from the tip of your triangle, going about two thirds down, or a little bit more than halfway. All right, so that's about good. And then you'll end up with something that kind of looks like this. So what you'll then want to do is you'll take your hole punch and you'll put one hole in one corner of each little triangle. If you look, we've kind of got, we've had like four little triangles. So you'll put it in one corner of each. Try and make it all the same corner. So I'm gonna put them all in the left corner of each little triangle. All right. Now what we want to do is to decorate our watermelon. So on the green side, that's going to be the outside of our watermelon. And our watermelon, um, they are kind of green with some darker green stripes. So I'm actually going to draw some green stripes on our watermelon. Like that. So I've got some stripes and then we'll decorate the inside of our watermelon. And then on the inside, our watermelons are usually pink or red. And we're gonna draw some seeds. All right, so I'll draw a big seed right there. We got one seed, two seeds, Three seeds. And I'll draw four seeds right there, and then I'll draw one, two, three, and then one down here. So that is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seeds. So I'll do the same on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. So we have eight seeds on each side. All right, so we're going to hole punch. 
Okay, so you got a little hole right there. And then, this is the fun part, you're gonna hole punch in your straw as well. Now I've already done my hole punch in the straw. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your little brad and you're going to use, take each corner that has the hole in it and you're going to line it up in the center. Okay. Yeah, you line them up so you can see through. You'll fold them all over on top of each other, and then you'll stick your brad through the middle, like that. And now our pinwheel is starting to get its shape. And then you'll take your straw and you'll put it in the behind. And then you'll open your brad up and lay it down. And you'll lay those little brackets down so that it stays nice and tight. And then there you have your pinwheel. All right, so that was our craft for today. I hope you all enjoy making them. If you make one, please send us a photo of you and your pinwheels. We really like to see all the different stuff y'all are getting up to. We miss y'all. And make sure you tune in for our next uh, Tadpole Time, the first Wednesday of every month at 930.